showed up from my first day on the job, brought lunch and coffee and everything, and there's just nobody to be found. Good morning, everyone. I was just gonna film real quick getting the eggs, and I noticed the lid on the uh, scratch green was missing. So we think the wind, this crazy storm we just had come through, ripped the lid off. I must not have locked it down yesterday. So walking over here to my neighbor Joe's. Luckily, it didn't really rain and it didn't ruin the grain. So yeah, I got up. I threw a couple cups already over here for the chickens. Don't mind Santa Claus. Need to get him off the side of the house. But anyways, luckily it didn't rain yet and ruined the scratch that's in the container. So, as you guys know, egg production has been phenomenal now. <laughs> oh. That one still worked. Anyways, let's see how eggs are doing. We've been getting a dozen or more. About time for a clean out. Oh yeah. Chicken pooped up in there. So we got two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, twelve, there's a dozen, fourteen, sixteen. 17 So almost a dozen and a half I'm gonna check inside as well real quick and I'll be back. All right, so 17 none were in the inside Hey, you guys keep it up. Okay at this production. I could probably retire next month. All right Look at this guys, I mean just look at it like TQ would say productions up I'm starting another business, Spencer Farms, Spencer Eggs, whatever you guys want. I'm just totally kidding. Let's get into today's video where I'm actually gonna go try to help out another business a little bit, as much as they'll let me, but really just going to learn the process of what they're doing. Let's get into it. Showed up from my first day on the job, brought lunch and coffee and everything, and there's just nobody to be found. Like, guess I'll just take this tractor and go home. What's up, man? I showed up for my first day on the job and couldn't no, find anybody. No boss. We'll have oh my goodness. You guys remember Nate, Bissell Maple Farms? Hey, if you guys are into tractors, sawmills, or maple syrup, make sure you subscribe to Nate's channel. I told him I was just going to take the tractor and go the back keys home. Are in it. There we go. Look at this thing. Wow. It is shiny. Did you just shine it up for me? No. No? No, they just don't get dirty, those LS tractors. And it's brand spanking new, right? <laughs> Look at that. LS, what is it? LL6100. MT, that's the MT, that's the MT573. Oh, okay. Now I see it in there on the hood. That's it's the loader. Okay. So it's hidden in there a little bit. MT573. Hey, I meant to ask you, were you mudding before you got here? Uh, I got stuck. Oh, okay, because I pulled in behind your truck and I just seen a big old glob of mud drop into the parking lot. I'm like, man, Nate went and had some fun before yeah. I got here. Oh yeah, Austin pulled me out of his little Jeep. It was embarrassing. It happens, right? I need new tires, that's what it told me. <laughs> These things are like slicks. Nice, man. So. This is go time for you guys right now here. Yeah, this is like the first 25% of the crop. 20%. Nice. So it's like the first big sapling. All right. So, hey guys, I'm gonna get into my PPE. No, I'm just kidding. Anyways, we're gonna show you a little bit of this process of what happens with some maple syrup. I sent Nate some photos yesterday. I'm driving down the road and this white little bucket catches my eye off, just off the side of the road. So I lock up the brakes. It's on a backcountry road, back down the road. And I see tubes coming out of it and I send him a picture. I'll plug it up here and I'm like, that's maple syrup. I would have never known that until I knew you, Nate. Yeah, that's a thing. 
and they're all over. Maple Day. Yeah, so I was driving across the hill a little bit later that day and I just saw white buckets all over the hillside from the road. Yeah. It was pretty cool, but I couldn't go back there. Part of Ohio. It was just down the road from my property. It's a sick addiction once you get into it. I haven't started yet, so no addiction for me. Only this one, coffee. No snow, and you know me, I like to work. So I'm here at Bissell Maple Farms and I'm gonna help these guys do whatever they need me to help them do. And uh, they're making maple syrup. It's running like crazy with the warm temperature. So first things first, you gotta get some sap, right? Nice white shavings, good healthy wood. This is the sap as it comes from the tree. This one's completely full. This one's a little more clear. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna go through the reverse osmosis and that's gonna separate the good stuff, the sugar, the syrup from the water. And they do this to save on burn off energy, the cost of actually boiling it, cooking it, I guess you could say. And the water will go into this big tank here and it'll be like crystal clear. I mean, crystal clear. And then the, the good stuff, the sugary stuff will go through here and go into where the boiler is, where the burner is. So this is where it. Willy Wonka sends the thing through the sky. Okay, it's gonna take a minute. But through this window, you'll see two big burners. So this is the good stuff right here. So it's coming through after going through the reverse osmosis. This is like, this is the money right here. This is money, okay? So we're up in the top of the facility now. Way down here is the boiler. How many BTUs, Nate? Three million. Three million BTUs to run this baby. He said the neighbors can actually uh, tell, <laughs> not only from the steam going off the roof, or out the stacks, but it might even dim their stuff a little bit. Pretty darn cool. Got Kevin down here, he's watching it like a hot. It's gotta be perfect. That'd be perfect. be honest with you guys there's like uh there's a weird energy in the room all of these guys have been doing this a long time and i'll tell you what you can tell they get excited like almost like deer hunting morning you know going into the season it's like super exciting like maybe it's just that they've all ingested a ton of sugar at this point you know <laughs> i'm just kidding I'm just kidding it is actually cool it is really cool Up here right now. Trying to give you guys a little shot. Does not take very long to get them. Yeah. Nate, I thought the owner of companies don't do this kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. We scrub the floor. 
cars with clean toilets. <laughs> that sugar will be boiled down later. Okay. So you're basically just like rinsing the tank. Yes, out. and then we'll boil this down when we're not. We're organic maple syrup farm. Yeah. This is not organic. Okay. So we have to boil this down in our kettle inside. Mm. So we're cleaning them up because these go back to a farmer on Monday. Okay. Because he's got to make syrup. He needs these. Nice. I told him we would get it done for him. There you go. Every drop matters, guys. If we go to a tree for 2% sugar, let's see what this is. There's Austin's little refractometer. So I've got a little uh, refractometer here. Okay. And basic idea is I've calibrated it first. I put RO water in it. You just put a little water there and flip that down and look through here. And then on the inside, there's like sight lines. And it's measuring how much it bends the light coming through it. So it'll read zero for pure water because light passes straight through it. But the more sugar is in there, the more it's going to bend that water. So you look in, there will be a dark blue background and like a, a lighter blue or a white distortion. And the higher that distortion goes, the higher your sugar content is. Wow. So once it's calibrated, I usually just kind of take a napkin and dip it and then get some drops on there. And then I'm going to flip that closed. And that's yep, getting 1.5. I don't know if you'd be able Let me to see get if the lens will pick there. it up. i got to get my camera focused in. Yeah, it's hard. To... Right there, guys. Kind of see it. I don't know if you can see his net down no, towards the look. bottom. It'll float to a certain level and you look at the line, it'll tell you what bricks it is, depending on how much it'll float. I don't have a clue what he's saying. Not even gonna lie. <laughs> You'll get to see it later. <laughs> Eight percent sugar. Eight percent. It's four times sweeter than what comes out of a tree. If we'll go to a tree to collect it. Why not clean it and boil that back down? Right. Makes so, sense to me. Yeah. yeah. This is gonna pay my wages today, Sean. Really? This will pay my wages. All right, so I wanna explain a little bit here real quick because I feel like we may have lost you. So what they figured out is when they get these tanks full of sap and they boil them down, there's a residual sap still inside the tank. So they take 220 degree water, shoot it inside the tank, swirl it around, and then dump it into those buckets. And you can see how much sap and water they've gotten out of these just few tanks that we've done right here. And that sap is big money and it actually has a higher sugar content, which Nate just showed you, than what's actually coming directly out of the tree. So why not rinse them out real quick and get the rest of it? Took a break real quick, walked out here. Wanted to show you it rolling out and it smells just as good as it looks. How awesome is that? All right guys, so, oh, we hit it. Yeah. And it's backing down. Backing down a little bit, okay. Yeah, it wants to open, it wants to do a draw. Here we go. The little handle's moving. Slightly, ever so slightly, a little more. Now, you have syrup. now we're gonna test this and see what the sugar content is. And it'll flutter a little bit and then it'll start flowing. Wow. I love the automation though. Like, could you imagine having to sit here like, Wait for it to hit that temperature and oh, then you, go. You used to have to do that. <laughs> oh, look at it go now. So typically once it starts going, does it just keep going? It will, this will draw for a minute because this can gets hotter in the back. So as the hotter syrup works its way forward, it'll keep it drawing for a little bit. Okay. We're still on the setup of this particular boil, so I don't know what this is yet. Yeah. This control is a little bit finicky. You sort of have to learn it, and I, I, I seem to remember it being 2.3 degrees over syrup, which today the boiling point of water is 210.6. Okay. So you add syrup should be 217.8. So I set it at 219.7, and we'll start there and see if we have syrup right now. Right. It's a learning process at the beginning. So you got to learn your system. Exactly. We're getting a good draw now. We're gonna go. So 
So this is kind of like uh, when the moonshiners are making moonshine, this is the heads they throw away typically, Kevin? I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. So we're going to do a test and see what we got here. It might, I'm not sure where it is. I drew off a little on the light side. I'm going to warm this cup up. Now this is a, temp we're going to do a temperature compensated method of checking the syrup density. I'm, I'm already looking like this might be, might be money, that might be a little heavy. So what we're going to do is we'll leave enough room for the hydrometer to, uh, to fill it. I'm going to set this over here. Now if I just put this hydrometer into this cup with the water, it's going to give us a false reading. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure I'm going to put this in the syrup over here and sweeten it up. Okay. I think the water on a bit. Let's put it in the cup. And we, I can tell right now we are pretty heavy. We're going to have to add water to this. Close to the 72 right now on that first draw. Ooh. We have really sweetened up on that first on that first hand up the hair of the syrup that we shot off. It was quite a bit of syrup. So it's just boiling away in there, guys. Oh, that pressure? Yeah, this is great. I'll tell you what, guys. Just seeing this whole entire process, this is a lot more work than I thought. Now, obviously this is on a commercial aspect and they're selling this across the world. So this has to be done like to the T. You know, if you were gonna do it at home from the way I was told, you tap, spile the tree, collects into the bucket, take it home, boil it down, preferably outside so it doesn't take your uh, wallpaper or anything off. Kevin told me that. And then you'll have what's left as your syrup, which you get a lot from the tree, but it comes down into a very small amount of the final product. And they're just doing that here on a mass scale, a commercial scale. And now it's coming out where I just showed you it was running. You could pretty much, once it gets to where they want it, you could eat it. Whenever we have this mixed in, we're ready. Okay. So the way I was told, crushed seashell. <laughs> Basically crushed up coral, right? Crushed up coral. It's a two atom, it's a two atom size particle. Two atom size particle. I guess diatomaceous, I think. That's, and what is that supposed to do exactly? This helps filter out impurities. It helps work with, it works with the filter press in the way it functions. And it, 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 it aids in stripping out all the impurities. We'll okay. show you here in a minute when we do a run through how clear it gets. And okay. The is very clear. So that stuff is going to come through the filter and then come over to here and go to the customer. That's unfiltered syrup. Well, I mean, you can see it's brown, it looks like syrup. Yeah. You don't realize how cloudy that is. So when we start drawing off good stuff, it's filtered. I'll take another sample and we'll put them side by side to filter to the unfiltered. You won't believe the difference. Okay. So much science, guys. So much, you gotta be smart to do this. Like, like this. You gotta, you, you, this is nuts. Like. And what's even crazier is, like, it started so long ago. Like, they were sitting here telling me how, like, the Native Americans taught the settlers coming here how to tap trees. And that's where it pretty much started for all of this, you know? I mean, and then you come through generation and generation and generation. 
and families passing that down, just think of how much we lose by not passing it down. It's uh, absolutely insane. Insane. Uh, let me go for the stack thing. Unfiltered, filtered. That makes a difference for sure. Yeah. Coral is where it's at. <laughs> so now it's going all the way through. You can see the hose. I'll tell you guys what. I have an all new respect for maple farmers. This is absolutely beautiful. When you stand back and just watch them do what they've been doing for so long, it's absolutely magical. I mean, taking something from a tree, completely raw, and turning it into something that's used around the world that people absolutely love, that's been passed down for hundreds and hundreds of years, you can't help but reminisce that the person used to do this probably standing in the woods and now you can do it on an industrial level here and get to share this experience with others from all over. It's a, a once in a lifetime experience probably and I can't say thank you to Thistle Maple Farms and Nate for allowing me to watch it happen. And that's how you do it guys from start to finish making maple syrup look at that absolutely gorgeous right to the bottle jugs of it big old jugs of it little bottles <laughs> cute little bottles you name it hey big shout out to Nate and everybody here for having me up here I know I was in the way a little bit trying to get shots this and that but uh, it was truly a pleasure coming up here learning the process of how they take sap from a tree and turning it into something that is absolutely delicious and enjoyed by the world everywhere. I'm going to drop a link down in the description as well if you'd love to order some sap, you know, support an Ohio business, small business, and uh, get you some maple syrup, put it on those pancakes, put it on your donut, whatever you like eating in your coffee, it doesn't matter. Link's down in the description. Thank you guys for watching. As always, keep tapping, keep uh, yeah, I'm just going to leave that one at that. Keep mowing, keep growing, keep making money, boys. Talk to you later. TQL, peace. Bye.